All right, so what is going on with the economy right now? Is it as bad as it seems? Is it better than it seems? It kind of depends on who you really ask these days. And at face value, the headlines are tough to read. Year over year, goods are costing Americans 5.4% more at the checkout. That's everything from bread to milk to cheese, pantry staples to luxury items. Maybe you need a new car. Not so fast. A global ship shortage means about 4 million fewer cars are on the lots this year. And so if you go to some dealerships, they simply are going to have fewer cars to sell you. Then there's the global supply chain crisis. With Americans' demand sky high, factories are struggling to keep up with that demand as they come back online and return to pre-pandemic conditions. And once items from Barbies to Nikes are actually off the factory floor and into the containers to make it to the stores, it's actually far from smooth sailing. Now, as goods make their journey across the seas, they hit another snag. A log jam at our ports means that every once, every, even once they do arrive, there are delays getting goods unloaded and into the hands of consumers. And the White House sending the Los Angeles port into turbo drive just this week. I want to be clear. This is across the board commitment to going to 24 seven. This is a big first step in speeding up the movement of materials and goods through our supply chain. But now we need the rest of the private sector chain to step up as well. This is not called a supply chain for nothing. Walmart, UPS, even FedEx say they're trying to increase capacity to get things moving while some retailers have too much of the wrong inventory. But that's just the beginning. Now there are problems on the production end domestically as well. We're seeing mass strikes across the country. In Iowa, for example, more than 10,000 workers walked out on farm equipment giant John Deere. Over in Nebraska, the strike against cereal giant Kellogg is entering its second week. And workers are leaving their jobs at a record pace in August, with more than 4 million workers just leaving. And September saw a disappointing jobs report, adding far fewer jobs than one had hoped for. And then there's, of course, what's happening on Capitol Hill. The reconciliation bill, Biden's safety, uh, social safety net, remains in limbo. That includes desperately needed funding for things like paid family medical leave and child tax cuts. It's a perfect storm of economic anxiety. And as, as Washington hangs in a dysfunctional gridlock, people are simply watching with despair. Joining me now to discuss all this is Julianne Malvo, economist and author and dean of the college at Ethnic Studies at California State University. Don Calloway is back with me once again. Uh, Julianne, I'd like to start with you. I'll, you know, level with me here. Are, am I being overdramatic or are things as bad as the headlines and the developments on the ground suggest they are? Is there something more to the story? Well, I think when you, in your intro, you talked about it depends on who you ask. That's the issue. But a lot of people are doing quite well. Um, inflation issue is a big issue. But it depends on whether you think that this inflation is permanent or transitory. Much of the inflation has to do with the reaction uh, to COVID. People have been emboldened and empowered to ask for more money. And for the first time in history, literally, uh, restaurant workers and others are making an average of 15 bucks an hour. Now, you know, two years ago, we were doing the fight for 15. We we're trying to get these wages up. We couldn't get them up. But now, uh, as people are facing labor shortages, You've got to offer somebody something to get them to come back to work, especially given with women uh, the challenges of childcare. Not just women, men have childcare challenges as well. But basically, workers have untethered themselves from the labor market, which makes it harder for people to be back into work. We saw last month people, four million people, leaving their jobs. They quit. Uh, part of it again is COVID, but part of it is also money. So the economy is not doing great, but it's also not doing hard. It would be it would go a long way if this Congress would get off their rear ends and pass this uh, bill back better because it will put money into the economy and jobs and good jobs. Um, the stock market is doing decently. I mean, it's not more than decently, very well. So who do you ask? If you ask someone who's an investor, oh, they're smiling. If you ask someone who's at the bottom, they're scrambling. They are not smiling at all. If you ask the truck driver where the prices of diesel have gone up by 25 percent, they're not smiling. Um, if you ask a restaurant owner how they're doing, they're scrambling by workers. So it's a mixed bag, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, remember, we're just finishing with COVID, and we're not really finishing with it because the Delta yeah. variant um, has hit very hard. 
So, Don, let me try to pose the, uh, the tougher question to you about what to do and whether or not anything can be done. What's your take on how the White House has intervened so far? You know, Biden taking action on the ground level, trying to get the L.A. port working on overdrive. But the big picture here, the larger solution here, things like reconciliation, the infrastructure bill, is this all just a Band-Aid on a bullet hole? Or what are the structural changes that need to happen to try and address the points that Julianne talked about? Yeah, first of all, I'll just say uh, I'm in, that I'm incredibly honored to be here with the great Dr. Julianne Malvo. It is so much my pleasure. Sorry, I had to have a fanboy moment there. All right, but <laughs> to answer your question, we need robust uh, public-private partnerships between the massive shippers, those that are usually manifested by the being the big box stores plus Amazon, right? Those content carriers have got to come together and support the federal government in their efforts. I mean, this is one of those things like we saw with the uh, with, with the pharmaceutical sector. Everybody kind of put profit motives aside for a moment and competition aside for a moment. And they came to the table with government to talk about manufacturing a vaccine, subsidizing the vaccine, and, and distributing the vaccine. That was a major victory, in, in, in obviously, against the backdrop of COVID. But that was a major victory in American like collaborative history. We need that effort right now for this supply chain issue with just as much urgency. That is the answer to move forward because COVID is going to be with us for some time now. And if these supplies don't come into into populate our supply chain in a timely fashion, yes, of course, we won't be able to get our Christmas gifts. But far more importantly, the retailers and the distributors won't have products to sell. So you could be looking at massive economic job loss, massive uh, uh, financial devastation for both homes and institutions. But you couple that, I'm in a Dr. Malvo, you couple that with ongoing social unrest, ongoing social injustice, the idea that people are sitting at home and being fed both information and misinformation about what the Supreme Court is doing and all these political stuff. You couple that yeah. actual bottleneck in an economic situation with social unrest, and we could be in for some very, very rough years ahead. Dr. Malvo, we've been talking about some of these big challenges for big businesses, infrastructure, ports, massive shipping companies, UPS, but that's undoubtedly, um, it, you have to wonder whether or not it's going to trickle down to affect small businesses too. How concerning is what we're seeing right now for your mom and pop shop on Main Street and having to struggle uh, through COVID? Are they getting enough help from the federal government and should the government be doing more to help those businesses as opposed to focusing on the big industrial companies that's a great question because government stepped in during covid to help big business our small businesses our black and other minority owned businesses they didn't get that kind of help many we lost about 40 percent of our black owned businesses people just had to close and that has implications on the wealth gap and as a uh, donna said it also has implications on the level of social unrest we feel because the wealth gap is driving a lot of the social unrest that we feel, we understand that everybody doesn't have the same opportunities. This whole conversation as an example about flexibility in employment. Amazon just said, everybody's gonna work at home. Well, they don't mean everybody. The truckers are not gonna be working from home. There are a lot of people, but the white collar professionals will be working from home. And that's the disparity that we see. So we, you know, small business has got the short end of the stick. There have been some great appointments that President Biden has made in terms of the, short, the Small Business Administration. There's a young lady, as an example, Natalie Cofield, who's leading, leading the women's business section uh, at the Small Business Administration, which is an exciting appointment. But those exciting appointments can't really make a difference if they don't have the dollars to make sure that these businesses are being helped. And too many small and medium-sized businesses, the mom and pops, as you say, they're not being that helped. So, in, I live in East LA, uh, at Cal State LA, and um, I was at a, a, a store the other day where half of the shelves were empty. You know, where they didn't have, I, it was a small store I go to from time to time, they didn't have any matches. I said, well, where are the matches? Not that I'm a firebug, where, the, where are the matches? The, the shipment didn't come in. And I, there were three or four other things, the shipment didn't come in. And so, yeah, there, there you have it. Yeah. So that's happening all too much. Well, if I can't spend money there, they don't have money. You know, they're, they're not getting any income in. And it may mean employment. It may mean they have to cut someone's job because they don't have the money. The smaller businesses are dealing with this at the micro level. At the macro level, right. uh, Amazon, others, 
have a lot of cushion that small businesses just don't have. Uh, Don, final thought to you. This month is officially being dubbed as Striketober. I've listed some of the major uh, labor movement strikes that are taking place across the country. Biden promised to be the, quote, most pro-union president who vowed economic recovery, who promised to fight for the average American worker. Um, is he doing enough for those workers right now? Should more be happening for those folks that are out uh, on the picket line? You know, it's very difficult uh for the Department of Labor to figure out what it can do in these circumstances. I think that Joe Biden has done the right thing in terms of himself and Secretary Walsh right now, has declared that they unequivocally stand with labor in these circumstances. Uh, employers should be paying uh, workers more. Employers should be taking a whole lot more time and attention to uh, employee well-being and wellness and holistic wellness. Uh, so I think that they have as unequivocally, and, and Vice President Harris has as well, they have declared their support for labor. And we can get to the details from there by listening to the workers and the most vulnerable in this country. All right, Dr. Julian Malvo, Don Calloway, thank you both uh, for your time. Greatly appreciate that fascinating conversation.